Hello everyone, today I'm showing you a way of <clears throat> creating this shape and form by Gianni Botsford Architects and it's a townhouse in London. It is basically this like old type of um, building that is, is, is like it is uh, in front of a, an old building but it has basically this uh, newly copper facade which on the inside has this very interesting uh, wooden structure to it. And what we're going to do today is we're going to recreate this structure, those basically those two um, rectangles that we have, and we will make a parametric um, surface out of it. Um, it might not be exactly how you see it here, but uh, it will be like as close to it basically. So um, here we already have the finished result. We will, as you see, you can like manipulate it as well and change it around the heights, the, the sizes affiliates and um, lots of other things as well as um, the counts of the wooden features as well. And um, we're going to, I will walk you through the process so you're gonna know how it works and what my thought process through the making of this kind of like recreating the structure is. So um, if I would just draw it down for you simply here in, in um, Grasshopper, um, it's basically we have like two rectangles and we have another one which is a little more, uh, more on the top. And the second one, uh, the second rectangle is basically combined with the first one in arc shape. So for that, we would need a third rectangle or, well, there are different ways to do it, but we do the rectangle that sits in the middle and is basically um, dependent on it. And when once we have those uh, three things set up, we can then um, define our new lines that we wanna draw in here. And we're gonna um, extrude those in order for them to have a certain thickness and to match with the wood that we have. So the first thing I'm gonna do is you're gonna simply don't change this to the typical grasshopper only view that I prepared here in Rhino. Um, we're gonna make a simple rectangle with an X and Y size. And this uh, way I just kept it um, in the same size. You can obviously use different number sliders, obviously. And we're gonna move it um, up. And not only once, but like twice into the Z direction. And you can obviously have a different um, you have it can have it on a different location, obviously. And if you wanna uh, like uh, have it a little bit off center or something, but in this case, we just like use it purely on the in the z direction. And we're gonna move it actually up twice. One time, um, a little bit like double the height, and one time um, just like the normal height. So we're gonna um, multiply the vector or by. 0.5 or to be a half SI. So now we have this one here and that one over here and it will obviously correlate to each other. And um, we're also going to make an offset on each of those curves as well. So you're gonna have an offset here, um, which would be most likely in the negative, but uh, we will see here, yeah. Minus. 100, no, my minus like this. And we're gonna use the same offset basically in um, the middle part as well, but just like, uh, again, um, in like a small dimension as well. Um, going to use this one here and put the result in there uh, with the new curve. So as you see, it's kind of like a different way. I think we actually might need to change it around so we have a little more, yeah. Maybe also have the number higher than just one so we have more playground here. In case you want to be more dramatic to it. So, okay now we have all three um, rectangles that we want to use and we're going to divide them in a set amount that will be the, basically the amount of um, vertical um, panels. You can use divide this one, this one, and also as well the one we had in the beginning. And with those, we're gonna use uh, an arc 
between those three with the, with the beginning, middle and end points. And the beginning, po the middle point will be that one, point B, point A, point C. And you see it's like quite now quite straight. So you might need to, to see move it around. So now we already have our outer shape already. And um, as well, we can use a loft command to have just the like non bearing structure facade as well. We're going to use the merge command and put in the first curve that we have, um, then the second one, which is this one, and then the third one, which is the top one. Oppa. And put all in here, and we also need to flatten that order. Well, I guess I've had the order wrong. Um, put this one here, this one over here. Yep. <clears throat> now we would have our uh, like the inner structure that we see here, all there in those things. You can even see it more correctly. Yeah. You can see like the inner structure. And now we need to put those things in here. We already have the um, arc basically set up. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use um, just a simple offset, a loose offset, um, which defines the offset of those things in here. And we're gonna use as well, just a simple number slider to have it all equally. And use um, a simple rule surface command to have the surface in between those things set up. So this already looks quite good. If you wanna change the amount, obviously it works. And I will gonna use a uh, plugin called Pufferfish, which um, is, I actually forgot the name of the guy, but he um, like produced it and it's like a way of simplifying a few commands in Rhino, uh, in, in Grasshopper, because um, it makes it more easy basically to use. So um, to make like, certain things, for example, offset surface, with a solid surface is quite difficult. Well, it is possible to make it in Rhino, but in Grasshopper, <laughs> but uh, it's a little time consuming. So this way he makes it like a lot easier as you see here. And we're gonna use um, number slider again here. Now we'd already have our um, vertical like things. And uh, we also need to have the horizontal ones and those are we getting by dividing the um, horizontal curves but we also need to flip the matrix because we don't want the points connected in here, but we want them to connect it to like um, the, the tree pair next to each other. So we're gonna use this, we, we're gonna use um, on the curve um, spine, we can either can use interpolate or polyline. I think I need to try interpolate here. I think I use another one here. I think I'm gonna, gonna use um, polyline so it will be it can be a closed surface. We need to put this to true, so it's a closed surface uh, pole line. And um, oh yeah, one thing I want to do as well, I want to make a small fillet to the curves as well. So we're gonna have um, a very nice like rounded surface as well, which is kind of as well in the beginning. So I think that's okay if we use it here as well. Put this with shift click in here. So depending like how round you want to have it basically. I'm gonna use it as well with the realistic numbers. So yeah. Nice. I might need to be careful. Might be a little bit buggy there. But anyway, um so now we would have our things and now we also need to um make a offset of that surface as well. I'm gonna use copy this one and put it in here. But we need to put the offset negative in order for this to be inside. And we're gonna use as well a ruled surface command in this one as well with the other, the old one. And as well use again the power for finish command um, and use to thicken, make the surface look thick. So nice, so pretty good. So just clean up the script a little bit to not look too bulky and too cluttered and everything. And we're just gonna put those commands all the way to the left. So we have a little bit more like playgrounds, 
gonna do. Oh, I guess fuck this one here. Now obviously it makes more sense if you like name them before uh, you use them, but well for the sake of I don't know time, I guess it makes sense just to do it quickly like this. And we can just like try out what they do basically. Obviously you see because you made the script yourself what they're gonna do actually. And um yeah, here we see the different commands in the X uh, in the di division and everything. And um yeah, I think it's a really nice script and it works really well. And uh, next, the cool thing we're gonna do, for example, if we're gonna um, uh, just bake those things as well now. Just bake those two things. Um, and maybe like select them all, group them. And now we already have the, the one on the back that might be a little different. Like this. Um, now we can just apply, we go to the V-Ray and we're gonna to, um, apply just the simple surface very easily. Apply the uh, render material and maybe wanna scale up a little bit yeah, like this. And only this geometry will be rendered as well. And if we're gonna hit the render button and the process obviously a little bit and um, yeah. So basically, obviously, uh, the design process takes a lot longer than just a simple render like that. But uh, it's a good way to start and to like think about it and have a very nice and easy um, rendering that you want to come up with. And in the end product, uh, you even can use Grasshopper as well, obviously, in, to a certain extent. Obviously, the way how it is here, it is the connection between those um, those things a little bit more smooth and a little more like nicer thought out but for a base point I think it's quite nice so enjoy the video and have a good day